Just waiting for Terry to join us. He'll be here shortly. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed the show today. A uh, little three-parter for you. A bit of a trip down memory lane, that one, it. But I'm not bragging about being in prison. People say, oh, you know, you're bragging. No, I think it's character building. And obviously, it's past for me now, isn't it? But, you know, you get loads of lager down your neck and you go out with your mates and that. You make mistakes, don't you? Because you're not in control when you're a young man, 23 years of age. But, you know, you make mistakes. You're not going on for 41 months, are you? And that's what happens, isn't it? But we all live and learn, don't we? Um, I certainly do. Learn the hard way. A bit like Apollo Creed when he tells the Drago, you're going to learn the hard way, but all the way around, wasn't it? Well, that would mean, yeah, but uh, it is what it is, and it's no to brag about whatsoever. So don't go out in groups. All right? I never took drugs while I was 26, by the way. So, okie dokie. So we'll just drink then. Mine in Billy's, loads of drink. And, uh, and the other one, obviously, 20 years after that. You know, tea fart job. But hey ho. Uh we had a good chat today. Uh the show, I thought the show were good, but uh the Crusher Ben Eubank thing, what did you make of the like the WWE thing after and all that? Because Peter DeGreatus tells me that the mates then to Crusher and your junior. So is it all hype? You think because he called him after it weighing, didn't he, Crusher? So here's my take. They were both going to let the fight happen first time around. Let's not forget that. Yeah, yeah. And Eubank would have known, right? And remember, Connor gave the game away when he said, I already spoke to Chris. Do you remember when he said that? Chris and I spoke, yeah. and it's fine. So we already know that. Number two, they're both kids of privilege. So they don't do beef. They're not raised in a culture of, of beef. It's an act. Right, what we've done is we've basically paid these guys to act. They're not they're not trench warriors who want to be world champion and dominate. They're actors who are playing a role and earning a fair few quid doing it. Admittedly, you're going to get a few few beatings in the process, but it's worth it for the money you're going to make. Yeah. So I'm not surprised at what I'm seeing at the moment. I uh, I think I tweeted at the time how many rehearsals did it take to get this right. Do you know what I mean? Because that's what it is. It's not serious, but boxing fans are so desperate to be part of something that they'll believe anything. We should have shut this whole Eubank Ben thing off when the drug test was failed, but we didn't. We're like, oh, well, you know, everyone found a reason to to justify it. Now, look, you got this fight coming up. They're both going to make millions at your expense, and they're going to just be like best mates afterwards, probably having dinner at Sheesh together. Having a good laugh at everybody who was paying for the pay per view. Yeah, because I, I just find it hard to believe that those two people, like Eubank and Ben, like while they have problems, they don't have problems. They're not their, they're not their dads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The dads fell out with Junior, aren't it? It looks like they've gone the separate ways of arguing over money. Apparently, I doubt it, man. They'll be back together. It's father and son stuff, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, I wish Junior all the best, but I can't help buying into what Carl said on the night on his channel when he said, be careful what you wish for going in because you you like, although Frotch last sparred him 10 years ago for the Groves rematch. Yeah. But he said, be, be, be careful what you wish for, because, you know, he's very, very tough. And Conor Ben looking at him in ring next to Eubank, it, it, it looks like a mismatch, doesn't it? Yeah but they're both going to make more money than they would fighting anyone else. And so this was always the plan, wasn't it? It was like, let's recreate that energy of Eubank versus Ben. But I just don't think this generation cares the same way. Second fight would have stinker anyway. Yeah? The second fight, Eubank Ben would have stinker. I know Peter yeah. DeFatis were a big mover and shaker in that fight, but I thought he was stinker. I thought Nigel Ben won, by the way, and Eubank admitted that he, he thought he'd lost. But the second fight was a stinker. The first one were an absolute tear up, wasn't it? But Ben got were and had to take seven pound off on morning, didn't he? It? But it's uh, hard it's hard to have two tear ups with the same person. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Psychologically you're just like, look, we don't want to do that again. Yeah. Uh do you think that 
after all this that's gone on and everything, you know, with drug testing and Eubank saying, well, I want extra money and all this for it to go ahead, and Frank Smith, the brother-in-law, not telling Junior what was going on behind the scenes and blah de blah. Do you think, Terry, that uh, after all that, something bad's going to happen here and that? Touch what it done, but somebody could end up on slab. Let's hope not. Mate. Let's hope. Let's, honestly, but if it did, they'd all be in the clear, wouldn't they? Because don't forget, an hour before you fight, you sign something to say that you're fit to fight, don't you? So if anything happens, nobody can be prosecuted. So nobody's going to get done, are they? If anybody... Well, boxing will just get banned. Well, banned well, you get all the people coming out saying it should be banned, but they come out every two or three years anyway and say that, don't they? No, la Labour government, reasonable majority in Parliament, it could happen. You think? Yeah. Brick top and take it underground, wouldn't he? He wouldn't put up with that, wouldn't he? He'd fight it to death, wouldn't he? You can't do that anymore. Like people got camera phones, they'll grasp on you. You can't do that anymore. No. Nah. Well, I wonder what would happen then. They stop them taking the phones into these unlicensed shows, wouldn't they? Mate, these traveller star car parks. That's what you'll have. Well, they'd, they'd all go BKB, wouldn't it? If it got banned, do you think? They'd ban it all. They'd ban it all. Or they'd be super regulated, so all forms of combat would have to be under a re recognised governing body. Yeah. Interesting, isn't it? Very interesting, mate. Very interesting. But seeing Crusher in that ring, knowing you weren't going to get stuck into Eubank, just stood there going, bro, 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 I'll do you in three rounds. Well, he said that about them guys that he's fought in America, in Florida and Vegas, and they went the distance, didn't they? and they were just waste men. <laughs> all right? Am I right? Yeah. And you looked out in his depth at 154, so what's he going to be like at 160 against the guy that's been a champion at 168? The Eubank will carry him. Do you think he would? Yeah. Did this all feel scripted to me? Yeah. It's interesting to see what happens in it moving forward. But, uh, very interesting to see what happens. But, uh, okay, then, moving on to the main event. R2, B to Beave, and Dimitri Bivol, two undefeated guys, 20 and 0, going up against a 22 and 0 guy. Obviously, one a puncher, one a slickster. How did you score it, Terry? Because there's a lot of confusion on social media with Simon, Jordan, and Bean, Super Bean. Well, so, how did you have it? So, I do, I do you know me, Russ, I don't score fights because I'm not a judge. Yeah. Um, but I thought I thought Baturbiev was a fair winner. I yeah thought thought he's a fair winner, not a comfortable winner, but a fair winner. But here's the thing: if someone said they liked what Bivol did and they thought Bivol won, I'm not upset either. Yeah. If they thought it was a draw, I'm not upset. I can accept any one of those outcomes. It's just for for what I value and what I like in boxing. I had Baturbiev winning. Yeah, I thought, I thought he was able to figure Bivol out in the first half of the fight, and he knew that he had to work off Bivol's jab to stop him getting into any kind of flow. And when he was backing him up, it, it was easy work for him. But he just couldn't hold the concentration long enough to keep Bivol permanently backed up. If he had done that, it would have been an easier fight for him. I just don't think Bivol does anything going backwards. Well, Bombay Dave's come out and said. Just like Eddie Hill said, the clear winner, clear winner was Bivol. You know he's going to sue you for calling him Bombay Dave, right? Why? He's from India, isn't he? I don't know. Isn't he born here? No, he was born in India. Uh, here we are. Let me just show you. Oh, I love that boy. He's going with the paperwork. Got all the paperwork here. Yeah. Mate, you know, India's a country of 1.3 billion. Mate. If you're trying to cross over into India. Yeah, Dave Caldwell, six wins, 13 losses. Uh, nationality, United Kingdom, resident, Sheffield, birthplace, Calcutta, India. Okay, so, so it's not Bombay Dave then. Well, it's next village, isn't it, Matt? <laughs> it's the next village. Bombay Mix is from India, isn't it? I like that. From Raz, Raz. What? If you knew how big Indian cities are, right? Indian yeah. cities are like the size of Yorkshire. Oh, are they? 
Well, Danny, be to Edlington, still the N12 postcard, and I just say it's next village. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't. Oh, I don't know. Do I? Maybe I'm ignorant a bit, but I call him Bombay Dave. It's better than calling him Penfold, isn't it? Or what I'd really like to call him. I, 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 I think Penfold, Penfold won't get you cancelled, though. <laughs> Penfold will probably get me cancelled, yeah, in this, with this woke course. He takes the on chin. He sat next to sat behind me. I mean, Ash next door come up to me and he goes, oh, uh, we've seated you in, uh, over there in the front. I went, oh, brilliant. You know, next to Gary from Welcome Estates. And, uh, yeah. Oh, brilliant. He goes, well, it is, Pork. Uh, Dave Caldwell and his missus are going to be sat behind you. I went, you're having a laugh. You know, so keep me in your best behaviour. I went, yeah, all right then. So, I mean, you don't know personally to me, has he? But you would have thought, because I had Nicky and Luke, the, the late Luke Smedley and Matt on the channel, sat in a boxing ring in Chris's gym, telling their story about what they spoke about. You'd have thought that he would have got stuck right into me, wouldn't you? But I, I turned around and he was like, you know, with his Bee Gees smile, so I went, fuck you, do. It's not, uh, I let it go. It was not, it wasn't Dennis's show. If it'd been Dennis's show, I'd have been, here, Brendan, get him out. And I've had him thrown out. <laughs> but it's not, it wasn't my show. There was a guest. And I left at half nine anyway. So it is what it is, isn't it? But uh, I ain't got an oak personally against him. Obviously, my pals have. But I call him Bombay Dave. Obviously, I've had to tone some of these names down because some of them just don't like it, do they? And, uh, but I don't upset anybody. I like to give him all a little bit of a name and make things a little bit, you know, Eddie Hills, Brick Top, you know, Crusher Ben, you know, Bombay Dave, Tony Peroni, although I prefer slow Tony, but it offends well, a member of my family and one of my close mates in Manchester. Oh, I can't call him that. So he's just, he's, he's what it is, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? We're, we're, we're not burning yeah. houses, are we, and robbing banks? It's just... Boxing chat with a bit of comedy thrown in it. So it's just as this is why I suppose uh, people tune in, isn't it? I suppose they want to be entertained, <laughs> don't they? And let's be honest, it is entertaining. Our chats, otherwise, people wouldn't watch, would they tell? They no, they wouldn't. They wouldn't. So if he's got a problem with Bombay Dave, email me, Bombay Dave, Pokey Corner at mail.com, and we'll change it to something that you like. <laughs> So, uh, well, Bricktop calls Carl Frock, Carl Frock, and Tony Bellew, Tony Bellew. Which brings me to the R to B to B. We've spoke about that and Bibble. You had B to B winning, didn't you? But I don't think anybody really cared, did they, really, about them, did they? I Look, it's one of those fights that, unless you're a hardcore, you didn't really care. But I, to be honest, I watched the, the Super League finals. I only watched the fight. Um, well, most of that kind of caught up on after the Super League. Uh, I thought the Super League final was the best event of the weekend. Um, shout out to Wigan Warriors again. Four trophies in a calendar year. Miracle. Mate, we don't watch we, we don't watch enough rugby league in this country. Did you see Oscox's latest video? Oh, fuck. You, man. <laughs> <laughs> we, we need better names, man. We need, we need better names. Well, that's what they call him on Wicker, isn't it? Johnny Oscox. <laughs> He's always you know, walking so, about in his tight lycra pants, isn't he? Who walks about in light blue t lycra pants? Why, right, we know Skiddy's on. Hey, what's all that about? So they call him Horsecock. So he's got his moniker. Did you see, he's, have you seen his videos lately? They're all brutally honest, aren't they? Everything's brutally honest, isn't it? What is that? None of them can lie straight in bed in boxing. Brutally honest. Do me a favour. But he's starting to uh, impress me. With his honesty, so it is brutally honest. He's <laughs> impressing me lately. I don't know why, because when he was at the Sky, he was the biggest company man ever. He's handed that over to Macklin, hasn't he, now? No, he knew his role. His role was to get people upset on social media, and he knew that, and he did it well. Well, what about Super Bean? Hey, him next door says to me, oh, could you go eat? Could you go easy on Ben Whitaker? I goes, why? He goes, oh, Izzy wants to sign him. And I thought, you are. Is that why Super Bean's on TalkSport going into bat for Ben Whitaker? Because Izzy wants to sign him for GMB. Is that what it's all about now? Bean going into bat on social media to, so, so to water down some of his performance when anybody in the world can see and everybody and, and whoever didn't even see it knows what happened that he quit. 
Ben Whitaker. Do you know what I mean? No, nah, no, nah, wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. This, this needs to, this, for me, here's what I've got to stick up for boxers, Russ. This quit talk needs to stop, right? Boxers need to stop using the word quit. We all need to stop using the word quit. Okay, yeah. You, because because you don't you don't take up a sport as a kid, go through all of that stuff, and go through years and years of sparring bigger what and what older kids. Oh, well, what happened? What, what, why, why did you carry on? Oh, maybe they say he hurt his ankle. Oh right, he didn't land on his ankle though, did he? Landed on his head. No, but but his leg had to land on something, right? Well, I mean, Simon Jordan says he quit. Well, Simon Jordan's a scumbag. Well, what does Simon, or what punch has Simon Jordan taken in the face to ever have to make a decision whether to quit or not? This is what I'm talking about, Russ. I'm tired of, I'm tired of that bit of it. Like, just once, w- once you're getting hit, like, once you've taken the first few hard shots, until you get stopped, it's all much of a muchness. Yeah, I guess. Do you know what I mean? So when people say he quit, no, but. Are you going to go in there if your leg's hurting you? Why would you? You wouldn't. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, but but to say someone quit, and it's like, well, and then someone said he threw himself over the rope. I'm like, you, how do you even do that? The ropes weren't tight, though, was it, Terry? When you, when you, that shouldn't have been able to happen, should it? That too light anyway. It's going tumbleweed job over. Mate, I, I, that's the first thing I said. I said, why didn't anyone check the ropes? Well, they did after that fight, didn't they? Because they came out and said they were way off. So I wonder if there's a claim going to go in. I would. Because, and I, I said this in my episode, Russ. What normally happens on the day of the show, kids will get in the ring. Turn have a little move around. tight enough, were they? Yeah. But you go into the ring and you have a little feel of the ropes. You run into the ropes, you lean on them, you do all this stuff to know whether the ropes are tight or loose. If they're too loose, you might just go to the officer in charge and go, look, guys, you might want to go and check the ropes. They feel a bit loose. And if the taller guys lean on them, they might fall over. And then the, like, the officer in charge, or whoever it is, like a Charlie Giles, will go and check the ropes. And if the ropes are loose, you got to come in with the wrench, whatever it is, and you got to tighten the, the screw until the ropes are tight again. That's what you Charlie should do. Charlie Giles. Huh? Charlie Giles, man. Is he still... Sponsoring the living up at Board of Control. Or is it, you still calling it the Board of No Control? Yeah, Board of No Control. Charlie Giles has been at, he's had his nose in the trough 30 years, that man, hasn't he? Hey? Yeah. Unbelievable. A lot of them, aren't they? Unbelievable. Yeah. But, Cheers. but you know, in that whole thing, Russ, what everyone forgets is that Liam was pushing with his right arm and his forehead. And he didn't stop pushing until they went over. Yeah. yeah, people forget that. Ben couldn't have jumped over. He couldn't have thrown himself because at the point where he started to get sticky, Ben's legs were dead straight. You can freeze frame it. His legs are dead straight. So he can't even jump because he can't bend. So why has Juggy as Spencer Oliver come out and Judge Jordan saying, where's the x-rays? He's got to show the x-rays. It's on talk about this morning. Yeah, but Simon Jordan's having dinner with Conor Ben. Like these people are not are not any barometer. Like why do people? In fact, just stop listening to them, Russ. Why are you listening to them? No, I just watch. I watch it. Just see what they said. And they no, was... no, just no, 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 no. You're part of the problem. Just turn them off. Yeah, turn Simon Jordan off. Never been in the ring. Never done anything in boxing. Just a gobby guy on talk sport with an opinion. Yeah. Back him off. Spencer Oliver. I mean, nice enough guy, but. You know, after you quit boxing, well, you've just been floating around Finchley, living with your family name. Cool, but sack these guys off. How, how many times are people going to tell me, oh, I, I don't want to hear it? Because here's what happens, right? If you go to Spencer Oliver, so-and-so quit, he'll be like, no, no, you can't say that. You can't say that. Do you know what I mean? Like, boxers are idiots. Top to bottom, they're idiots, right? The rules only apply to non-boxers. But when you apply the same rules to them, they don't now nah, just turn them off. I, I don't even want to talk about these idiots anymore. Yeah. Okay. Be- because uh... because you can't like when you when you say someone quit, it sticks with them through their whole career, like Kel Brook against Errol Spence. That never left him. Billy Joe against Canelo. 
never left him. Billy never boxed again. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, Daniel Dubois against Joe Joyce. He, can't, he boxed again now, didn't he? Yeah, but do you remember the, the hell he got? Yeah, he got loads of stick, didn't he? And now look at the comeback. Yeah, he's proved and, no, no, and he got stick against Usyk. Yeah, yeah, and Usyk won. Yeah, and he's still come back, hasn't he? Won yeah. the, the same clowns were saying, yeah, he swallowed it against Usyk. You know the same same 10% cut coke idiots, you know what I mean, pub toilet knobheads. I, I just, nah. Just, that, that quit thing, it's like calling someone a nonce, really. It's the boxing equivalent of calling someone a nonce. Don't you? No, no. Do we say they were safe for another day then, Tony? Yes. Oh, oh 100%. Okay. Okay. Uh, we'll finish off on this one then. George Warren, uh, where he's one of the biggest movers and shakers in boxing at the moment, putting everything together. He's the brains behind the, the Queen's Saudi thing and all that. He's the big dog, apparently. Uh, he's doing well, hasn't he? Quiet. He, he, he's... No, he doesn't shout his mouth off and you don't see him at, like, Eddie Hills in every fucking interview, do you? No, but you know what he is? He's an effective deal maker and he builds relationships. And what he doesn't do is he doesn't burn his bridges. Yeah. And whatever happens in private stays in private with George. Yeah, you know, Hearn's out here revealing emails and text messages and all this. You know, what I mean, like, we need more George Warrens in this game. We do, we do. Okie dokie. Well, listen, thank you for coming on. They've had a they're in for a right treat. The boxing, you, hardcore. yeah, man, the, the hard, the hardcores. Uh, I wonder if I want to get slaughtered in the comments this time. You're gonna get slaughtered for your uh. Training to murder on the dance floor because you better not kill the group. <laughs> Mate, no, yeah, but you gotta see the numbers that get lifted though. You can't you can't you can't you can't laugh at someone when you can't outlift them. Listen, Terry, we can laugh at each other and we can take it on chain, can't we? Some people can. Well well us two, yeah, but you know, we, we can't let the civilians jump in on this, can we? <laughs> Go on man. Listen, right, have a great day. Take care, mate. Cheers, mate. Bye bye. All right. Well that with Terry. Chap and Dharma, you know, he's a banker from London, originally from Zimbabwe. He came here over as a kid, as a young kid, and he's done really, really well for himself. And he, uh, he's got a trainer's license as well. And uh, on amateur scene, he's doing really well. So good luck to Terry, good pal of mine, Terry. And uh, Rico, co, 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 co. Hope you well, Rico. Hope you well. That's about it, really. Okie dokie, let's get Ryan on from uh, the Northwest. One piece out.